This lesson on Unity events is going to go from zero to multivariable inspector hacked events. Oh, sounds fun, let's get started. What is an event? Well, if you have no idea what an event is, in C Sharp, an event is basically a function that can call any number of other functions. And it, you don't have to hard code it, you can kind of set it up on the fly. Now, if you don't know what that means, you should really go look up the basics of events somewhere else, because what I really want to do is talk about Unity events. The problem with C-sharp events is that Unity doesn't know what they are. So Unity can't save them, can't load them, can't show them in the inspector. They're basically invisible and intangible. It's no good. A Unity event is a wrapper around a C-sharp event that lets us do all of that stuff we need to actually be able to do. It lets us save them and load them and show them in the inspector. And that's very handy. How? How is it handy? Well, let's us set up events. I want this off button to turn the rocket engine off. How do I have it happen? Well, over here in the button, here's a Unity event. It's already set up for us. All we have to do is add some functions to it. So when we click the off button, turn this particle system off. When we click the on button, oh, I didn't click that right. I click the on button, turn this particle system on. Easy enough. We've now told the Unity event to call specific functions. Off. On. Off. On. Very straightforward. We could add in any number of functions. We could have the on button turn the off button on and the off button turn the on button on and that sort of stuff. But the problem is that these don't take any arguments that are adaptive. They don't, they don't turn, I can't click this to turn the, the rocket on and off. When I click this, it just turns the rocket on because the button has no state. The button doesn't know how many times it's, how many times it's been clicked. All it knows is that it has just been clicked. What we need is something that knows whether it's been clicked on or clicked off. Good news, that exists. It's called a toggle. The toggle knows whether it has been clicked on or clicked off because it has a checkbox that's either true or false. And if we look over here, on value changed, Boolean. Hmm, that's interesting. On click, nothing. So the toggle can pass a Boolean. It doesn't have to, but it can. So whenever this value changes, it passes the value to anyone that's listening. Well, that's great because you know this particle system. We don't want it to just turn on or just turn off. We want it to turn on or off depending on whether or not the toggle is on or off. We could do this, but then we have to specify which way it is. No, no. We use this, dynamic bool, set active. Same function, but we'll pass the argument automatically. Perfect. No problem. But that's always one way. That's definitely not something that understands what's happening, because if I turn the engine off, the toggle remains on, and uh, vice versa. So it's something where you have to remember this is very much a one-way connection. <laughs> now, with that in mind, let's talk about something else, because it's nice having these events from UI stuff, but what I really want is events from the game stuff. I really want the engine to overheat and explode, and I would like the whole world to know about it. How do I do that? Let's go ahead and make the engine overheat and explode first. Turn on this script called overheat, hit play, the heat increases, and pop. That's quite an explosion, I'm sure you'll agree. So I've created this very, very simple script. All it does is slowly increase a counter, and when the counter hits one, it destroys the game object. What I'd like to do is inform the world of how hot we currently are every frame. So public, oh, that's not how you spell it. Public unity event on heat change. Keep in mind that you will need to be, have, you will need to include this unity event uh, namespace, unity engine dot events. You should be able to find it pretty easily. Most, uh, most people can resolve this stuff with a right click if you forget, but it's no biggie. Down here, after we change the heat, we say on heat change dot invoke. There we go. So now we've got a Unity event on our own script. Beautiful. Perfect. Wait, I forgot. 
we wanted to pass the heat value. We want to tell people how hot we are. Well, I know you can do that. I just don't, don't remember how. How do you do it? Well, all you have to do is tell the Unity event that you want to pass a float like that. Down here in the invoke, we now invoke with a float. Perfect. That'll work great. Keep your eye on the ball. Boop. It's gone. What happened? Well, if something doesn't show up in the inspector, it means that Unity doesn't think it can serialize it. Serialize is just a fancy word for save. So if Unity can't save it and load it, Unity, Unity doesn't show it in the inspector. Because the devs are a little bit lazy, Unity doesn't even bother to check and see whether this can be serialized. It just assumes it can't. It's like, I don't know what a float is. But yeah, except for you clearly do. There's another one right up here and you saved that one fine. Okay. Unity can save this. Unity understands how to save Unity events. But for some reason, it defaults to off. So how do we tell Unity it can save this, this float event? How do, we, how do we applaud it and tell it, you can hit the ball, you can do it? This is the deep magic part. It's the annoying part. Pay attention. This is the magic word, system.serializable. If Unity sees that, Unity will understand that it can serialize something. That's already part of mono behavior. So mono behaviors already have that tag. But Unity event random ass thing doesn't. Can we put that in here? No, that would be way too easy. That actually doesn't work. Nope, we have to put it out here and we have to do is have another class, public class. My float event inherits from unity event float. It's empty. And then instead of having unity event float, it's my float event. So did you catch that? I moved a little bit fast there. Unity event float is a class. This is a class. So all I've done is said, I'm creating a new class that descends from that class. And it's exactly the same. There's no changes at all. By the way, you can save this new class that I've created. And then down here, I just say my float event instead of unity event float. So does that work? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm serious. That's how you do it. I don't know of any other way to do it any faster. It's definitely the stupidest part of Unity events, but once you understand how it works, uh, it's not a big hurdle, and we're about to go pretty far into more things that Unity events can be used for in cool ways, and I would hate for you to not be able to do them just because Unity didn't put in the right parser. So that's how you do it. It doesn't. Unity does not know that it can save this, so you have to descend from it and tell Unity that it can save the descendants. It's really the fastest way to do it, and I know that it's stupid, but that's just the way it is. So what sort of thing are we going to do? Let's go ahead and put in a slider. Drag the slider up. Make it nice and big, like this. Up here in the rocket. On heat change, slider. Value. Hit play. <gasps> there it is. Look at that. Increasing. I can fight it, but it won't help. Okay, so now we have a visual display. Wouldn't that be handy? Say if your goblin has X hit points, and you got like a little slider above the head that's filling or decreasing and showing more red. Yeah, that's that's how you do it. You don't like check every frame to see if the hit points have changed or code in a hard-coded HP change. So now go fetch a specific event or a specific UI thing. Instead, when your HP changes, you fire off an HP changed event, and the HP changed event is linked to the visuals. You see how that works? It's not that hard, but you have to know how to think that way. Now, what else can we do with this? Well, we've been adding things over here in the inspector for a while. I would like to, uh, to maybe add them in code. So let's go ahead and add them in code. Well, just to show you how that works, let's create something that can take 
a float. So public void, uh, public void, <laughs> um, my heat is loud float heat. And then we say debug.log name plus ah, plus heat. Okay. So that's great. How do we sign up that function? Well, if we take a look at this, there are a couple of things we can do. On heat change dot add listener, invoke, and remove listener. And those are definitely the three things you're going to be using most. So we'll go ahead and add listener. Add listener unity action float? What what what's that? Don't overthink it. you just type in the name of the function. Make sure that the name of the function, the function has the same number of arguments as the event though, the same exact type of arguments. It's got, it's got a match, but that works. So now what we do is we hit save, we hit play, and we go over to the console. Ah, works great, right? So is there anything wrong with that? Take a look go over here. It's not showing up. Yep. Uh, it's not really a bug, but the way that Unity has chosen to do things is that only serialized calls get shown in the inspector. So if you add new events, new listeners to the events, uh, it works, but you can't see them. Yeah. Maybe in the future, these two problems will be changed. You won't have to declare a serializable version of an event and you won't have to worry about not being able to see the listeners, but it seems unlikely because it's been that way for a long friggin' time. So why would, you know, it sounds like it's got a little bit of overhead. Why would you want to use Unity events instead of C-sharp events or something? I can hand code all this stuff, right? Well, Unity events are super powerful for letting you rig stuff up however you want. You got an RPG, you want to drop in a whole bunch of, you know, goblins, you can do that. You can do it randomly, just drop some goblins in. But the very first time you meet goblins, you can drop in a special goblin troop that's got a special set of events that allows them to say stuff, allows them to explain how you attack the goblins, because the events have been wired by hand in that one particular case. There's no reason to use a bunch of custom code you can just wire it up with the event system. Also, this event system is pretty flexible. It's way more flexible than I've led you to believe because you know what? We don't have to just take floats. We can take a vector three and an overheat and a transform. Why not? Of course, in order to do that, we're gonna have to have a function that actually takes those things. <laughs> uh, There we are. And we'll remove this listener for now. So this can take up to four arguments. Can't do more than four without extending stuff further, but it can be. Um, cannot access. Oh, I didn't invoke it correctly. Hold on. That was a really strange um, error message to give for you didn't use the right number of arguments, but whatever. Um, you got to call it with the right number of arguments and you got to receive it with the right number of arguments. So if we go up here to the rocket, you can see that this says, I don't know what the heck you were trying to say. And that's because setting a value takes a float. It does not take a float vector three transform overheat. So we need to have something that does, and that would be on the rocket. See, my heat is loud. So that's the only function that matches. So that's the only function that can take those arguments. Now we can pass other functions, other arguments, um, just arbitrarily, but we can't do it using those values. We can only do it using arbitrary values. So keep that in mind if you're creating your own stuff, but this is pretty handy. Now, as I said, you can only pass it four arguments. 
You can pass at five if you do a lot of gymnastics, but generally speaking, just keep it below five. Four arguments is plenty. Uh, it can pass. It can pass transforms. It can pass game objects. It can pass mono behaviors. Um, it can pass anything, but if it's not a serializable object, then Unity might barf. Like it won't show up in the inspector properly. Um, it'll still work though. So this is a very powerful tool to let you wire anything together any way you want. You can do it in code, you can do it in the inspector, uh, and that's how Unity events work. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.